Hi, I'm Dave Baring, Technical Director here at TriStar, and I'm in the lab today with Frank Hild, our Director of Technology for our Surface Mod Division. And if you've seen our plasma uh, tech talk that Frank has done before, you'll uh, understand that a lot of the work that we do is in the medical field. So today we're going to talk about specific applications in medical and how our plasma treatments and our other um, uh, applications uh, come into play with medical devices and analytical devices. Mm -hmm. So Frank, maybe just give us a quick overview of what it is in the medical industry um, that requires plasma treatments okay. and uh, how we can help those customers. Okay, well, uh, typically when it comes to our medical customers, they're interested in wettability in most cases. Uh, wettable surfaces on diagnostic devices, filter media, and uh, uh, blood filter media, some porous substrates. Uh, the wettability on these polymers uh, is mainly due to depositing chemical reagents for detection. Either they need the surface to be wettable so that the uh, reagents uh, flow nicely uh, and, and adhere well, or they need to get uh, human fluid to the device, as in with wicks and filter media. Uh, second application that uh, we get, which is more elegant, are actual chemical functionality. Standard PCR well plates uh, made of propylene, we actually treat those in our plasma chambers uh, to either a uh, primary amine surface or a carboxyl surface. Uh, the companies that require that use reagents to derivatize either the amine or the carboxyl so that they bind the appropriate DNA or RNA strands. Uh, I think the third application that, that would be of interest is uh, USP class six coatings uh, for lubrication, uh, like perylene type coatings. Uh, this, this type of coating uh, allows uh, plunger tips or o-ring seals uh, to uh, operate smoothly and lub lubricate uh, and, and turn nicely uh, without actually having a loose lubricant like silicone oil sloughing off and getting into the patient. What are some of the problems that uh, we here at TriStar have run into? When customers bring us a material, I know that there have been conditions where there's some difficulty with the plasma or with the treatments that we're trying to accomplish. Maybe talk about that a little bit and, and the types of things that we need to find out from customers mm -hmm. to help them. All right, yeah, before we actually do uh, a run or actually uh, begin any experimental work with the materials, really what we have to know is what is the base material? Is it a polycarbonate? Are you sure it's polycarbonate? Is it polystyrene or a mixture blend? and uh, are there additives to these polymers. For most part, most of our medical grade materials don't have any plasticizer, but that's not to say that the injection molder that these parts are coming from don't have flow agents or mold release. So all that information must be known before. Uh, and if your molder is a good molding or the plastic parts are coming from a very reputable place where they're very consistent, plasma treatments can be repeatable and reproducible. Uh, but before we get started, we have to know what we're dealing with, what the material is, and how it's been processed. So our, our process, just for you, our customers, our process as we go through this study is that uh, we like to get samples of the material. Frank will then do some research on it, understanding what some of the basic parameters are that you're interested in accomplishing, whether it's hydrophobic, hydrophilic, if you're going to be putting on any... Uh, um, other uh, media onto the surfaces, just what it is you want to do to functionalize that material. Um, and as we go through the study, what we do here is develop a recipe, and that recipe becomes locked in for your particular material. But as Frank said, uh, there are some times where we run into situations where uh, you can literally get from a batch to batch uh, a scenario where the same treatment doesn't work. So it's very critical that we have a full understanding of all of the issues with your polymer, uh, with your, your design parameters, what you ultimately want to accomplish, and um, 
and that will help us to help you get to that goal. Mm -hmm. um, some of the specific applications that we work with, I'll have Frank talk a little bit about those. Mm -hmm. uh, a, a new application that uh, seems to come up, has been coming up uh, recently, uh, are to either inhibit or enhance flow of aqueous solution through uh, open cell foam material. Uh, in my hand right now I have an untreated open cell foam and this is our treatment uh, open cell foam. This happens to be not treated with plasma but with the chemical compound uh, that we invented here uh, because it wicks throughout the media. If this was plasma treated it would definitely inhibit uh, uh, aqueous solution from penetrating it but if it were to get torn the core of this foam would be uh, natural. Uh, so plasma is very much a surface activation. Uh, so what we had to do is create a, uh, a compound that would wick throughout this material to make it hydrophobic. So open cell foam, natural state, absorbs the aqueous solution readily while the treated foam material repels the aqueous solution aggressively as well. Simply not even staying on there. Flows what it out. is is basically a very sophisticated scotch guard. Yeah. I but, in, <laughs> but in our case, we're scotch guarding it all the way through. That's right. And it's not quite that simple. Right. Um, one, of, one of the points, though, that we want to make here is that while plasma um, has a very universal fit, especially with polymers and elastomers, it may not necessarily be the perfect solution. Um, so a lot of the work that Frank does here in terms of chemistry is looking at polymers and elastomers and understanding again what the ultimate goal is for you as a customer and if it doesn't work with plasma we have other techniques uh, other chemistries that can be applied to get you to that ultimate goal mm -hmm. uh, a couple other things maybe talk about uh, yeah. yeah polycarbonate right um, also medically speaking we have ophthalmics um, a lot of the push right now is to lightweight, high index refractive uh, polymers. Uh, though these polymers are lightweight and have good index refraction, making glassware uh, very lightweight uh, and attractive, um, they scratch easily. So we have coatings that can be a nice hard coat coating uh, for these, for urethane or polycarbonate lenses uh, that can be applied in a, in a dip or a spray. Uh, to further that point, the polycarbonate or the urethane lens, if it were plasma activated prior to the coating deposition, the coating uh, uh, adhesion becomes tenaciously strong. So uh, it, it, uh, uh, it, it becomes a very good conformal uh, uh, scratch resistant coating for the ophthalmic lens. Um, for the filter media, this actually is uh, a blood filter media, uh, has micropores but by nature of its propylene backbone, uh, it is hydrophobic, but we can actually activate this so that the uh, blood filter, uh, the blood will wick through this material quite easily, uh, not allowing any bubbles to form or, or make the filter any uh, less efficient than it, than it possibly could be. So the bottom line of our surface modification group is really, again, looking at polymers, looking at elastomers, understanding uh, what it is you want to accomplish, understanding the chemistry behind it, um, and then using any number of techniques that we have available to us to make that surface hydrophobic, make, make it hydrophilic, uh, put on a special coating, whatever it is that you need to have us do, um, we here at TriStar uh, SMD have the ability to help you with that, and we invite you to contact Frank or any of our other divisions and uh, we will be happy to work with you on developing that recipe, developing a solution for your medical, your biomedical, analytical devices. Um, that's one of the areas of specialty here at TriStar, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you and uh, invite you, too, to go to the video uh, library on a regular basis. We're constantly adding new things. If you haven't seen Frank's uh, discussion on plasma technology, please do that. It will give you a better understanding of uh, how all of this works. Thanks for joining us at Tech Talk, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thank you.